Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. I love switching up my decor for holidays, but it can get so expensive. Luckily, we're crafters and we can use our creative skills and a few handy tools to make things beautiful on a budget. I've got some great holiday projects for you to make for under $10 using mostly all items from Dollar Tree. And some tips on making even the most wallet-friendly decorations look high-end too. So come with me to the craft table and we'll get started. I know we all love Dollar Tree crafts, but sometimes it's so much fun to shop that you still go over budget or get overwhelmed by all the options, right? So here's a tip, picking a color scheme or theme will help you stay on budget and create decor that complements each other rather than clashes. Or if you find a ribbon or another accent that you just love, use that to guide your choices. I really love this red and gold ribbon, so you'll notice I used red and gold in other projects too. It helped narrow my choices so I was less overwhelmed while shopping as well. I also had my colors in mind while planning the vinyl, you see right here, when adding cut versions of my free designs to the projects. I'll share the whole collection and tips on how to use them in this video. With that in mind, let's look at what else we need for these awesome Christmas projects. For the Santa snowball bucket, we need snowballs. <laughs> I'll show you how to make some using fake snow. A bucket, water, foam balls, Mod Podge Extreme Glitter, a disposable plate, and a small foam brush. These work best if they sit overnight, so plan ahead. Then we'll decorate the bucket with floral foam, a gold drape, and white adhesive vinyl. For the decorated vases, I'll cover these cute glass ones with chalk paint and a foam brush. Then we'll add decals and red and green permanent vinyl. Aren't they cute? Now the mini stacked books take more chalkboard paint, a brush, decals uh, using permanent vinyl, and then some decorative pieces to brighten up what starts as a wooden crate. Like this, isn't this awesome? The canvas with chalkboard tags right here is so pretty. Really just takes that, a large canvas, and a set of chalkboard tags. I'll show you how to use my free designs and a bit of floral decor to make it really special. Some iron-on vinyl for the canvas and adhesive holographic vinyl on the tags will do it. And don't forget a heat source. I use my mini easy press with a heat-resistant mat, but you could, of course, use your iron. The gift boxes are actually wooden blocks from a tumbling game in the toy aisle. This one, in fact. I'll show you how to make them into cubes using wood glue. Then we'll decorate them with optional fairy lights, a gold drape, and some of that red and gold ribbon that I like so much. I also use lots of decorations from Dollar Tree to make my projects look like they came as a set. Wire cutters will help you snip them into smaller sections as needed. They're fun to combine, and if you use complementary ribbons, everything will look so much more stylish. I cut my vinyl decals using a Cricut Maker 3, but you can use any cutting machine, including an Explore or even a Cricut Joy if you're making the small designs or you can cut your vinyl by hand with a craft knife. If you do use a Cricut as I did, a green standard grip mat will work for them all. So let me show you where to get the free designs for all of these awesome Christmas projects and then how to make them. Step one, get my free holiday decor files. Some of the projects require my free design files to make them like I did. To download them, go to jennifermaker.com slash 443 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs on the page by searching the page for design number 443 and then click it to download the zip file. You can cut these by hand, but it's faster to use a cutting machine like a Cricut. I'll demonstrate how I made these on a Cricut Maker 3 today. To begin, add the SVG collection to your canvas in Cricut Design Space, and we'll come back to the screen when we need to make a design. Now let's do the projects one at a time. Make the snowballs at least a day ahead of time so they can dry before you put them in the bucket. They're a little messy, but so beautiful. First, put on some gloves and place the instant snow in a bowl and mix in a little water. I splashed in a little at a time and it only used enough to get the fluff effect. 
Follow the package's directions, but don't oversaturate your snow. Next, unwrap the foam balls. I used 12 in various sizes. Pour Mod Podge Extreme Glitter on a plate and lightly roll a foam ball through the glue. Use a small foam brush to distribute the Mod Podge evenly around the ball. Roll the ball in the bowl with the snow until it's covered. Place it on butcher paper to dry. Repeat the process by rolling all of the foam balls in Mod Podge and rolling them in the snow. Then let them all dry. Back in Cricut Design Space, ungroup the collection and hide the decals for the other projects. Keep the designs for the Santa buckets. They are already sized right for them. If you're looking for a different bucket than the one in my supply list, measure the height of each section to make sure the words aren't too tall. If you need to adjust them, remember to always keep the lock icon closed to maintain the proportions unless I mention otherwise. Select the words, then click ungroup, and then click and drag the corner of the bounding box to resize it as needed. To fit the bucket, I made homemade five and a half inches wide, snowballs four and a quarter inches wide, the 50 is two inches wide, and the snowflakes are an inch and a quarter wide. I've included two snowflakes, but I want more snowflakes to go around the bucket. So select one of the snowflakes and click duplicate until you have the number you want. I'm going to make 10 total. You can also change the color using the color box at the top of the screen. I'll make mine white. Now select your machine and click make it. If prompted, select on mat and 12 by 12. We don't need to make any adjustments on the prepare screen. For the material settings, I chose premium vinyl, permanent glossy with more pressure. Cut your vinyl to size and place it on the green standard grip machine mat with the backing side down and color side up. Make sure your fine point blade is in the right clamp. Load your machine mat and press the flashing button to begin the cut. When it's done, unload the mat, flip it over and curl it back to release the vinyl. Use a weeding tool to remove the excess vinyl around the designs. And don't forget the insides of letters. I recommend placing one word or snowflake at a time, so cut your designs into separate parts. Now cut a piece of standard grip transfer tape slightly larger than one word. Peel away the backing and press it firmly over the first word that you're going to transfer. Use a scraper tool to burnish both sides. Turn over the vinyl and peel away the backing. You can use a lint roller to keep the bucket from rolling when you're applying your vinyl. Place the vinyl decal on your bucket and burnish again. Then remove the transfer tape. Repeat for the remaining pieces, reusing your transfer tape as many times as you can. I randomly applied the snowflakes around the bucket. Your bucket is now ready for snowballs. Place two foam blocks in the bucket as filler with the glitter drape on top and fluff it to cover the blocks. Now place your snowballs randomly in the bucket. If your bucket won't be disturbed or knocked around, the snowballs can sit loosely in the bucket. If you need a sturdier decoration, you can use hot glue to hold them all together. Faces come in all different sizes, so measure the front visible width on yours just in case it's different. Wipe the vases with a lint-free cloth and isopropyl alcohol to help the paint stick. Use a foam paintbrush to paint the vases with vertical strokes. I used white chalk paint, but you can try any color you'd like. I put the opening of the vase on one hand and rotated it while painting with the other. Allow the vases to dry about an hour and apply a second coat for a more even color. Back in Cricut Design Space, I've hidden designs for the other projects, and I'll hide the Believe wreath too. The detailed Merry Christmas design will go on the wider vase, so let's resize it. Click the wreath and enter three inches in the width box above the canvas, and I'm going to make the other two wreaths two and a half inches wide. Select your machine and click Make It. If prompted, select On Mat and 12 by 12. On the prepare screen, click and drag the designs a little further apart for weeding. This is optional, of course. Then click back on the first mat and click continue. 
For material settings, I chose premium vinyl permanent glossy with more pressure. Cut your vinyl to size and place it on the green standard grip machine mat with the backing side down and color side up. Make sure your fine point blade is in the right clamp and load your machine mat and cut. When it's done, unload the mat, flip it over and curl it back to release the vinyl. Use a weeding tool to remove the excess vinyl around the designs and don't forget the insides of the letters. Cut your designs into separate parts. Now lay your first base down. A lint roller may be helpful to hold it in place. Fold up the edges of the transfer tape into a taco shape or a U shape and place the transfer vinyl on the decal. After burnishing the decal onto the transfer tape with your scraper, turn over the vinyl, peel away the backing, and center the decal over the vase. Press the vinyl to help it adhere well and then gently peel away the transfer tape. If you have any areas that have trouble sticking, use your scraper tool to rub the vinyl and help it adhere better. Repeat the vinyl application for all vases. And now it's time to decorate. I wrapped a piece of jute twine around the neck of the vases and tied a knot in front of the vase. Use wire cutters to snip apart some of your decor, like the holly and the pine cones. Then just hot glue them to the front neck of each vase. This 12 by 16 canvas is so cute with some tags we'll decorate in a bit of garland. I love how the shimmer vinyl works with these. Let's see how to resize the designs if you need to. In Cricut Design Space, I've ungrouped the collection and hidden the other designs. Let's make a template for the canvas. Mine is 12 by 16 inches, but yours may be a different size. Click the shapes icon and click on square. Use the operation drop down to change the rectangle to a guide. A guide helps with layout and won't get cut out. Open the lock icon and then type your measurements in the size field. Next, measure your tags and make sure you can fit one for every letter that you want on your canvas. I want to put bright, so I need six. Mine aren't rectangles, so I measured the height from under the hole at the top. Mine are two inches wide and about two and three quarter inches tall. Duplicate the big guide and adjust the dimensions on the new one to match the tag. Drag it so the B is within the lines. Hold the shift key down on your keyboard to select the red letters of bright and the white offset layer in the layers panel. Click and drag the corner to resize all of the letters. When the B looks like a good fit, the rest of the letters will be too. I made my words offset layer two and a quarter inches tall. You can resize the Mary and the and if you need to. Uh, just drag them into position on the big guide to check. I made Mary 2.15 inches tall and the word and is an inch tall. Remember to leave enough space to hang the tags on a string or a garland. I'll use the color box to change Mary to a light orange for the gold vinyl. When everything looks good, select your machine and click make it. On the prepare screen, toggle on mirror for the mats with Mary and the word and since they'll both use iron on vinyl. Click back on the first mat and then click continue. For the material settings, choose the setting that matches your vinyl type. And all of those had more pressure. Cut your first vinyl to size and place it on the green standard grip mat. Remember, adhesive vinyl is shiny side up, but iron on vinyl is shiny side down. Make sure your fine point blade is in the right clamp and then load your machine mat and cut. When it's done, unload the mat, flip it over, and curl it back to release the vinyl. Repeat for the other mats. Then use a weeding tool to remove the excess vinyl around the designs. Now let's start with the tags. For this project, I recommend not layering the vinyls before transferring them to the tags. So cut a piece of transfer tape slightly larger than your largest white offset layer. Press it to the B offset and peel away the vinyl backing. Place the white vinyl on the chalkboard tag, roughly centered, and make sure the best side is facing up. Now that the offset is on the black tag, the outer lines are much easier to see. 
Use strong grip transfer tape to pick up and apply the corresponding red letter, centering it as best you can on the white. Shimmer vinyl needs the extra strong tape and the scraper will help them stick. Keep going until you finish the tags. Plan your spacing for the signs starting with the tags. You can use your computer canvas to remind you how much space each element will take. I'm going to stagger mine up and down about a quarter inch apart. Warm up your hot glue gun and secure each tag with a dab of glue. Don't worry about the ties for now, just don't get glue very close to the hole. They need something to hang from, of course, so I grabbed a cute berry garland, but you can use jute, twine, ribbon, whatever. Form the shape you want across the canvas and leave enough to tuck around each side. Then snip with the wire cutters. Some areas might lift from the canvas, so add a small dab of hot glue to hold it where you want it to lay and then secure the ends to the back too. Gently pull the twine from each tag and tie it in a knot around the garland. You want it just tight enough to have a hanging look, but not too tight that it pulls tension on the garland. So take your time. Use scissors to trim the excess twine. Now for the iron-on vinyl. Make sure there isn't any debris on your canvas, so use the lint roller to clean anything away. I used a mini Cricut Easy Press to heat the designs without disturbing the other items. Place the canvas over an Easy Press heat resistant mat or a folded towel. Preheat the area that you'll decorate for five seconds on medium heat. Place the words Mary and the word and that are cut out of the iron on vinyl onto your canvas, centered above the tags. If any liner is between the vinyl and the canvas, be sure to trim it. One at a time, press the iron-on word for 30 seconds with constant movement and firm pressure. Avoid heating the liner's edges as they can mar the canvas. Carefully flip the sign over and press the design area from the back for 15 seconds. Keep the tags hanging off the pressing mat. Remove the liners when cool. Lastly, I hot glued some leaves and berries in the upper corners for decoration. You can spruce up your canvas however you'd like. These cute wooden crates look totally different with paint. Turn them upside down so the opening faces down. Use a foam paintbrush to paint the wood. I used chalk paint on mine, Andirondack white and oatmeal look really nice. Allow about an hour and apply a second coat of paint for a more even finish. I made the mini stacked book titles all in Cricut Design Space. If you're using a different wooden crate than me, be sure to measure the height and width of each book spine to make sure that you size your text appropriately. My book spines measure five and a half inches wide and about three quarters of an inch tall. So on a clear canvas in Cricut Design Space, click Shapes and select a square. Click the unlock icon above the size fields and then enter the measurements for a spine on your stacked books. I changed them to be five and a half inches wide and about three quarter inches tall to match the raised areas on my little crate. Now click the operation drop down and select guide. Then click text and type the book name or sentiment that you want to use for the top book spine. I'm going to type have yourself. Then click the font menu to select your font. I used a Dorn Serif, but you can use any font you like. A free alternative for personal use only is called Waldorf or Storia and it's over at dafont.com. If you aren't sure how to upload a font to Cricut Design Space, be sure to visit jennifermaker.com slash how to upload fonts to Cricut to learn how. Click off the text and then select it again so you can drag a corner of the bounding box until the words fit in the guide. Mine worked best at size 25. With the text still selected, click the duplicate icon. Double click on the text to edit the words. I'll type a Mary Little for this one. Make sure it still fits in the guide. Duplicate again to make your third book. I'll type Christmas in that one, right? Have yourself a merry little Christmas. <laughs> we will apply each final layer separately so there's no need to attach the words. 
Select your machine and click make it. If you're prompted, select on mat and 12 by 12. On the prepare screen, click and drag the designs a little further apart for weeding. This is optional, of course, but it makes it easier and then click continue. For material settings, I chose premium vinyl permanent glossy with more pressure. Cut your vinyl to size and place it on the green standard grip machine mat with the backing side down and the color side up. Make sure your fine point blade is in the right clamp, load your machine mat and cut. When it's done, unload the mat, flip it over and curl it back to release the vinyl. Trim your lines apart, then use a weeding tool to remove the excess vinyl around each one. And don't forget the insides of letters. Now cut a piece of standard grip transfer tape slightly larger than the biggest line of text. Peel away the backing and press it firmly over the vinyl and turn it over and peel away the backing. Place the book stack on its back so the spine is facing you. Fold up the edges of the tape into a taco shape or a U shape and place the center of the vinyl onto the correct spine. Use a scraper tool to help the vinyl adhere to the painted wood, then gently peel away the transfer tape. Repeat for the other decals and then decorate. For one book stack, I wrapped wired twine around the wood crate. For the other, I used gold ribbon. Just tie it around the wood with a knot at the top. Lastly, hot glue on the embellishments of your choice, like holly, a pine cone, or leaves. To make three different sizes of boxes, I used almost three complete block sets. Lay the blocks out to experiment with the layout of each cube before gluing. Play around until you get a cube or rectangle of the size you want. Use wood glue to stick the blocks together and allow them to fully dry before moving on to the next step. I left mine overnight to be sure. I used the chalkboard paint on oatmeal to make them look more uniform and then let them dry. If you want to add lights, wrap battery powered fairy lights around the box before adding the ribbon layer. And then be sure to leave the battery box accessible. Then wrap your ribbon around the cube using as many layers as you like. Wider ribbon will go faster and make sure the battery pack is still where you can reach it and then secure the ribbon's end with hot glue on the back. For the finishing touch, add the accent ribbon and make a bow on the top of the gift box. I have lots of ways to make really pretty gift bows over at jennahermaker.com slash tie a perfect bow. Lastly, if you have a battery box, apply a small dab of hot glue to the back of the box and secure it to the back of your gift box. Look at all of these beautiful decorations. And these are just the beginning. I had so many ideas, I had to make a few extra videos to fit them all in. I made this beautiful wreath and this mini Christmas tree with a personalized tree skirt using mostly iron-on vinyl and Dollar Tree decorations. I show you my secrets for taking the tree from wimpy to wonderful in the full tutorial at jennifermaker.com slash 444. These reverse canvases you see here and here are also really fun and combine iron-on vinyl with adorable metal words from the craft aisle. I show you how to make them over at jennifermaker.com slash 445. My light up snowman is always a hit at parties. You can find all of the materials and steps at jennifermaker.com slash 358. A super easy door hanger that uses a charging plate or charger plate as the base is over at jennifermaker.com slash 346. And my cardinal remem remembrance vase with a new tutorial is over at jennifermaker.com slash 449. And can't forget our cute personalized elves are over at jennifermaker.com slash 170. If some of these videos are not available at the time that you're watching this video, they will be soon. Three of the videos are debuting during my annual countdown to Christmas, the Merry Maker Mingle. Sign up free at merrymakermingle.com so you're notified when the videos are available. Plus, you get all of the details for free projects, tutorials, designs, and everything you need to craft a beautiful Christmas this year. And for my final decorate on a budget tip, 
just have fun. Don't stress out because crafting should be a fun part of the holidays, not a time to strive for perfection. No perfection. Your creativity and time are a gift to share with others. Always remember that. Now, if you have any questions about making DIY Christmas decor on a budget, please leave your question below this video or ask over at my Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And that's it for today. Until tomorrow, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.